we had our rivals in here this weekend in North Carolina a &T. Uh Unbelievable crowd, unbelievable energy in the stadium. And um, it was a great experience, great, great for, for the fans and alumni and everybody else. But uh, very pleased with our guys, how they, how they played this weekend. Um, I spoke to them on Friday night, the team meeting. And the, the big thing I had the message for them was about their legacy and about my career here. I, you know, had some accolades and, and so, on, so you know, a lot, a lot of wars and all that stuff, but I never had an opportunity to beat A&T. And it was about, you know, you're writing your story and your legacy, what's it gonna be? Aside from the wars, aside from whatever success we had in the past, as far as what's your legacy gonna be here? And I challenged the guys and, and they answered the challenge. And I was really pleased how we played in all three phases. Um, obviously we need to clean up some stuff on special teams, but offensively, I thought uh, we ran the ball well and it started up front with the O-line. Uh, we had three quarterbacks that threw for a touchdown. Um, Jamari, of course, Jamari Taylor ran the ball well again this week. And defensively, I thought this is our best game this season. We we flew around defensively, played with a lot of energy. Guys got hats to the ball. But uh, Coach Cord and the staff, defensive staff, I thought had a great game plan. And uh, we limited explosive plays and, and uh, created three turnovers, of which which turned into points. So I was very pleased. Um, I guess more so probably most happy for our alum and our university uh, to come up with a big win like this. And there was a lot of, a lot of proud Eagles out there this weekend. I know that the offensive side of that, uh, you know, lit up the scoreboard and is impressive, but I wanted to drill down on that defense. How nice was it to see them come out and, and to force turnovers and to uh, stop drives like they did? Because I know that's been one of the things that you've been really wanting to see this defense do this year. Right. And I think, you know, it was – we didn't have some great – you know, we didn't have really great performances early on, but I think it was we, we were playing so many young guys and had so many guys out. And I, saw, I, was, I was so happy to see our young guys – especially in the back end, our defensive backfield. Uh, those guys did a great job of communicating. Uh, they were all on the same page, and uh, they took the coaching into the game. Um, they knew the game plan. We had an idea about what they were going to try to do and how they were going to try to attack us. But uh, we got one or two guys back this past week, and I hope we're going to get a couple more guys back uh, this week. But you could tell that they were gelling defensively. Our chemistry was there, and the overall communication um, was, 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 was really good. So – we didn't have any blown coverages or anything like that. They had one explosive run early, um, but but I thought that we did a much better job with our run fits and and um, and tackling was was much improved. If I could follow up with that, uh, no speech is needed, obviously, for the game against A and T. But uh, how do you keep these guys <clears throat> from not? basically uh, underperforming this week. I mean, you come out really hyped up one week and you want to keep, you know, a level of uh, level of intensity, but you know, they're probably not going to be able to match against it against a rival like a &T. How do you keep them uh, ready to go to the Circle City Classic there? I think when you're playing, when you're dealing with football players, naturally the intensity I think is going to be there. Uh, a lot of it is, is preparation. And I've seen just as many guys in the building today as I did last week. So they understand that was – Hindsight has one game. Obviously, it's a big game, but that's just one game. That has no bearing on, on our goals and what we're trying to accomplish. So uh, we're working to, to prepare to beat a very good Norfolk State team, very physical team up in Circle City Classic. Uh, so so pre preparation is key. And, you know, we talk about you don't feel pressure as long as you're prepared. So we have to continue to prepare uh, the way we have. We can't take anything for granted. Um, Norfolk State's going to come here and try to upset us. So, um and, I, you know, our guys are even kill. We don't get too high, don't get too low. So uh, they enjoyed that win, I guess, Saturday night. But yesterday was trying to move on. And today, you know, obviously it's all about Norfolk State. Not a question for me here for right now. Uh, is it nice to get away? I mean, you've been in Durham, Chapel Hill the last, you know, three straight weeks here. But to get on the road, to <clears throat> get everybody uh, away from uh, the noise, if you would, does it uh, does it help you when uh, going up to Indianapolis there, kind of a bunker mentality to get them refocused or not? No, I like the noise. I like the <laughs> – <laughs> my guys love playing in the nest. So we would much, much rather prefer playing in Durham. But uh, it's another opportunity for us to travel and, and play in a classic. Uh, we play in a Lucas Oil Stadium. So, you know, another NFL venue, which we've had a lot of success with. And, um, you know, being able to take our brand up to Indianapolis and and let other folks in part of the country see what, what the Eagles are made of. 
when you looked at the you know, Orange Blossom Classic to start the the season, and now this game coming up in Indianapolis, um, does it? How much joy and pride does it fill you as the head coach to see your program getting some of these um, national games, getting this attention this season? Yeah, because nobody was calling us a nineteen or twenty. <laughs> yeah, we know uh, we were we were we were struggling getting getting games, but um, it's it's good for people to want us to play in these classics. Uh, you know, our, we have a great fan base and we travel well. So, um, you know, obviously that's incentive for them to, to bring us uh, to these classics. But as another experience for these guys, and that's why, you know, when we recruit them and we talk about our scheduling and, and how we're moving, you know, it, it helps with the recruiting as well. So a lot of guys want to come, <clears throat> not just to come to North Carolina Central, but play in big games, play in these classics. Um, it's a great opportunity. So uh, I'm, I'm happy for that and happy for our players to be able to experience it. Uh, Walker was named uh, co-national HBCU player of the week. Um, Who's the other one? <laughs> Jalen uh, Daniels, uh, the guy you'd be playing uh, coming up here shortly. Okay. Um, oh, he's a good one too. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> can you talk to me a little bit, just, you know, the, the what you saw from Walker uh, coming up this week uh, or what coming up uh, last weekend against a and and then what you will be seeing at quarterback as well kind of these two quarterbacks going head to head here coming up this weekend. Yes. I, I talked to Walker in pregame when we were warming up and uh, I told him just have fun today, just have fun and ball. And uh, Walker is a perfectionist. I've, I don't think I've ever met anybody that loves football uh, more than Walker or wants to be great. Uh, he studies all the time. He's always putting extra work in and um, you know, it's, it's sometimes that could be your worst enemy. You know, because I thought the Elon game, I thought he pressed a little bit, you know, because he wants to be perfect. Uh, he wants to do everything just right. Uh, sometimes you just have to settle down and make a bad play, you know, just move on. And and uh, I thought that he did that, you know, this weekend. He took what the defense gave him, went through his reads, uh, wasn't wasn't focused on one guy. I think we had 10 receivers that caught a pass this weekend. And, you know, we have the guys talk about everybody eating. So everybody ate this weekend. But, you know, uh, uh, you know, he has unbelievable arm, arm talent, very smart. And, you know, he's not nearly as fast as he thinks he is, but he is a great football player. What, what have you seen from uh, Jalen um, for, for him to get co-national player the the week uh, and to, to face him coming up um, you know, in Indianapolis? Well, yeah, I mean, when you beat out the preseason, one of the preseason all-conference players, with, uh, I don't want to mispronounce his name, Otto. Coons, I'm sorry, whatever his name is, the number four. But they, he's a very good one, the one that started last year that's all world. But for him to beat him out, uh, that's saying a lot. But, you know, tall guy, uh, strong arm, takes care of the football, and does a great job of managing the offense. You know, it's kind of like we look in the mirror. Their offense is very similar to ours with a lot of the RPO, the run pass option stuff. Uh, so we have to do a great job of, with the run fits as well as um, – uh, um, matching up on on the perimeter, but you know he's easy. We're gonna have a workout out for us. Uh, they got some really good receivers out there. Um, Eighty four is one, um, and then of course the Jones kid, which is all world too. So they have some really good receivers. But it starts with the run game. They're very physical up front. They have big offensive linemen that'll knock you off the ball. So this is the best offensive line we've seen uh, this year. I wanted to ask uh, about um, Jamari, if I could, about the emergence. So I know you've had, you know, obviously had a back uh, the last couple of years, and but how nice is it to have him kind of uh, step it up a little bit more and to just be that much more of a safety valve for uh, for Walker and for the offense to be able to hand it to a guy like that to get positive yardage pretty much every time. Yeah, he's he's so reliable and consistent. You know what you're gonna get out of him uh, day in and day out. Um, you know he's not gonna blow any assignments. Or anything like that. You know, he's the hard nose work, hard nose runner. Uh, great catching the ball out of the backfield. Probably has more receiving touchdowns than he does rushing touchdowns. Just an asset to have in his program. And he's another guy. Like I talked about Walker sitting behind Davies last year. He's another guy that's a, that was a 1A, 1B. He could have easily been a starter for us behind, you know, uh, Latrell Mookie Collier last year. So he kind of sat back, waited his turn. And, you know, we knew what we had. We knew we had. So when when everybody got was in panic mode about guys that we that we were losing last year, I wasn't concerned because I knew we had Walker and Jamari and Chance and a bunch of other guys. But uh, he he's one of many. We we've got a whole lot of firepower on that offensive side of the football. 
Final question about Norfolk State. How tough is it to get a read on a squad that, I mean, it played FAMU tough, but then uh, really has been kind of up and down? I mean, uh, they, they, they beat uh, Virginia State, but then, you know, have problems with uh, other squads. Is it tough to get a read on a team like that that is just so uh, inconsistent, really? I got my read. All I needed to see was week zero when they played FAM, and they had about 250 yards rushing against the uh, defending uh, HBCU champion. So when you're doing that against the, the defending national champs, uh, that says a lot about your program and, and how physical they are. So uh, I don't I don't haven't haven't seen all the film to dive in to see why they've been inconsistent in some areas, but uh, when they turn it on, they're they're as good as it gets. So you know we we we're gonna get challenged uh, this week. Well, that's well uh, we do have a campaign uh, that's about to drop. Uh, we got a sixty six dollar campaign. Uh, I won't talk about the 66 number and where that came from, but uh, I think it might have been the most points that have been scored against North Carolina a and in school history. So, Chris Clark, we would like for you to be the first donor to help support this cause, uh, $66. And uh, we will have some folks matching, and I'm going to match. I haven't talked to my wife about this yet, but I'm going to go ahead and match uh, the money that that is, that is um, uh, donated. I'm down for at least 66. I promise you that, Coach. Appreciate that, Chris. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You're a Greensboro guy? Yes, sir. Okay. How how uh, <laughs> how many people did you have in the stands uh, cheering you on, and how nice was it to uh, to beat that school from your hometown, first and foremost? Uh, a lot, of course. Uh, most of my family, uh, family friends, they went to A&T. Um, I grew up going to A&T games, seeing that rivalry all my life. Um, but it felt great, man. I love being on this side. Uh, wouldn't change for the world. For the world, um, felt great. That was my last one too. Um, I've been playing this game for four years now, so it felt great to go out like that uh, with a bang. Yeah, I was going to say, Coach uh, talked about uh, solidifying the legacy. Um, him never having a chance to win one. How nice is it to be able to go out on top like that? To be able to, you know, no matter what. Hey, I got you guys. Yeah, it felt great, man. Uh, Felt great for me, but it also felt great for the guys that came before me, my past teammates that are uh, graduated and living their life now, and even the alum that I don't know. I mean, it feels great. It feels great. They can uh, have bragging rights for another year. Uh, they, I know everybody felt great that night. So yeah. If I could follow up, I know that the sixty six is what everybody's you know raising funds off of now with uh, things. I get it, but it's the other side of that equation. What you guys did to hold them in check. It seems like I don't know that line, especially you guys found something to uh, thwart that. What was it this game or the last couple of weeks really? Because it seems like you've really started to put it together and make it click. See, I feel like just as the defense uh, as a whole, we knew we had to finish games. We had to start fast and finish. Uh, we've had a few decent games, but we haven't really been finishing that well. So I feel like after that Carolina game, we really sat down, made the corrections, and uh, really came out this game firing, firing all four quarters, uh, putting together a full game, getting a pass rush, getting a stopping them run. We could we could stop the run a little better this week, but we'll uh, we'll get it fixed for Norfolk. Uh, Coach Oliver mentioned that Norfolk's uh, offensive line is probably going to be one of the most difficult units you all will face this season. Um, what what have you seen so far in film? What kind of challenge do do they present? Yeah, I started watching them today. Uh, they're big guys. They're real big up front. Uh, don't think they can move as well as our D-line can, so that will be an advantage we have. Uh, but, yeah, they I know they can run the ball pretty well. I saw that week zero. I think the first drive, they busted out a 70-yard run against FAM. So we know, we know we're going to have to be solid up front, uh, hold our gaps. Backers going to have to feel pretty fast, but we feel pretty confident. Uh, and and kind of going off of that too, uh, their quarterback, um, along with Walker, was one of the co you know national HBCU players of the weeks. Um, what what kind of challenges does he present, and and how can you all combat that from the defensive line's perspective? So yeah, he's a taller guy. Uh, he's decent outside the pocket. Uh, he's young too, so we know he's going to be on the move pretty fast. Uh, probably going to make some uh, some good reads. So he's probably going to get out the pocket or going to try to get out the pocket. But um, we feel like we got under control. I did want to ask about playing in that Circle City Classic, getting out on the road out in the Lucas Oil Stadium. Uh, I know you don't get a chance to get in venues like that all the time. How nice is it, number one, to get on the road, get away, but to be able to play in the uh, home of the Colts? Uh, yeah, it feels great, man. Uh, last year was fun. I'm glad we're going back this year. 
I think about every every year since 21, we've played in some type of classic or some type of NFL stadium. So uh, we've gotten pretty used to it, pretty accustomed to it. So it's always nice to go. But uh, we'll be pretty locked in on that game. Uh, we won't let the bright lights uh, get to us. We're just ready to put the ball down, get to it. I was just talking about coming to Central to play big teams, big games, and obviously the schedule reflects that. Um, what do the new guys say and what do the recruits say about playing in NFL venues like that? Because I got to think that that turns some heads too. Yeah, I mean, it just feels great. Uh, I mean, what else can you ask for at this level? Um, you know, having big games every year, big TV games almost every other week. So, I mean, what else can you really ask for when coming to an APCU, you know? You see you again there, Walker. Uh, like the glasses, first and foremost <laughs> there. <laughs> Wanted to ask you about uh, heading into this game uh, against a and It was a little bit of a question mark whether or not that you were going to even play. How nice is it to go out and put on a performance like that and etch your name into the rivalry the way you did? Oh, yeah, yeah. It was a blessing to get out there. Um, you know, I credit a lot to Dr. Sierra Hobbs and uh, Dr. De uh, Dejanet. Uh, get me right, get me ready to play. Um, but yeah, this uh, the Eagle Aggie Classic, not some, not some you really want to miss. So I was doing everything I can trying to get back, being able to play in this game. And then uh, for the game to go out how it went was was awesome. It was what, it was what we expected, but uh, it was awesome to go out there and execute the way we wanted to. If I could follow up with two more before I hand it off. How do you stay that juiced up? Because sometimes you you know get up for a rivalry game the next week, you got a tendency to kind of let up just a little bit. How do you maintain that same intensity, if you would, heading into Norfolk and into Circle City Classic? Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, obviously the uh, Eagle Aggie Classic, that's a big game. That's a big rivalry. But, um, you know, I feel like we we go into every game with the same mindset, you know, this mindset to dominate. Um, so, yeah, I don't think there's any, uh, any different energy that's going to be added or lost uh, going week to week. I think it's kind of the same. You know, Coach Oliver, a lot of times he's talking about staying at 70 degrees on the thermostat, never getting too high, never getting too low. So, you know, we feel like we can uh, maintain that throughout the whole season. We'll accomplish what we want to accomplish. This game coming up here, um, you got some good memories in that place. I mean, uh, what you guys have, uh, what you had personally, like five, six touchdowns uh, last sure, year in Indianapolis. Yeah. I mean, you got some good feelings in that building. What's it like to go back to a place where you had so much success uh, just last year? I mean, it's cool. It's cool. I mean, you know, I think uh, when I think of the Colts Stadium, I think of that venue. Um, you know, obviously, you think about the combine. Um, yeah, I feel like it's a, a very historic venue. So it's always cool to get into uh, getting that stadium to play. Um, obviously, last year was a great experience. Um, but you know, this year is a different opponent. Uh, it's not going to be the same game. Um, but we look to dominate uh, in the same in the same way. Just talking a little bit about your high school. I, I don't know if you guys were teammates in high school, but talk a little bit about how you've seen Chance uh, Patterson improve. It, it seems like. He's kind of the dark horse of this group where I, I know the other guys like Joaquin and, um, and and those guys kind of get a little bit more credit, but it seems like he's really working hard. Kind of talk about what you see from him on a day in, day out basis. He can play the game very well. Um, you know, uh, he was a freshman when I was a senior in high school. You know, we went to the same high school, uh, played ball with his uh, brother, Corey. Um, he was uh, in the same grade as me. But uh, Chance Peterson, man, he's a, he's a hard worker. He goes out there and he can run any route in the playbook. Um, he's fast. He can move. Create separation very well. Um, you know, I think uh, this summer was really big for him. Uh, just really just putting his head down and working, really. Um, I think that was the biggest biggest uh, jump for him was just just working and then getting the playbook and then understanding where he's supposed to be, how he's supposed to be there, why he's supposed to be there, just the little things. Um, so, yeah, I think um, first UNC, you saw a glimpse of what Chance can do. Um, but I think there's a, so much more to come for Chance. And then just the last question, I know you've learned a lot over the last three years, but – what over the last three, four weeks have you learned about yourself that, you know, maybe you didn't realize or that you realized, okay, I didn't realize I had this in me, but, you know, I got it now. Like, I mean, you know, I mean, I don't know if there's anything new that I learned, but um, definitely just staying resilient. I mean, obviously the first three weeks uh, didn't go, I mean, as an offense didn't go as we wanted it to go. Um, I know me personally, that game versus Elon, I mean, there's a lot of plays that I want back from that. But um, staying resilient, um, approaching every day the same, uh, approaching every work day the same. Um, you know, that's probably the biggest thing I've taken away. Walker, it's it's been a couple of weeks, but when you went out against Carolina, uh, Central was only down by seven points and really looked good. Looking back now at the way they perform against James Madison, have you thought to yourself, you know, if I could just have played that second half, what might have been? Uh, I'd be lying if I said I, I haven't thought about that. Um. Yeah, it's some it's something that I I thought about. Um, so I mean, yeah, obviously I wish I could have stayed in that game, but um, getting into the locker room at halftime and talking to the doctors and really analyzing how I was feeling at that time, it was uh, it was uh, 
doctor said it was in my best interest to, uh, to not go back in. Um, but yeah, I definitely, I mean, if it was up to me, I would have went back in. I would have uh, jumped back into the game. Um, but you know, that was last week. Um, you know, we moving forward. Uh, now we're A&T, now we're on the Norfolk, so. You were named um, co-national HBCU Player of the Week. Um, just kind of thoughts on getting that kind of national recognition on your end? Uh, it's cool. I mean, it's not really, I, I don't really, shoot. You, get, you leave it up to me, I give it to Jamar. I mean, I think Jamar played, he played a heck of a game on Saturday. I mean, shoot, 130 on the ground, uh, plenty on the, um, plenty through the air. And shoot, there's one, um, the rushing touch that I had, I, there's an argument. I think he might have gotten in on that play before I threw the check down to him. And I think he, he might have gotten in the box. So, I mean, it's cool to get recognition, but I mean, we got we got bigger goals than that. So, uh, to to go off of what you just said there, what has it been like sharing a backfield with with Jamari? What how how talented of a of a teammate is he? I mean, he's he's incredible. I mean, you see it on you see it on game day every Saturday. And I said it I said it before the season. I say it again. I think we I think we're talking about one of the best backs in FCS football right now in the country. Um, and I don't think it's very close. And I think you see it uh, week in and week out. I mean, it makes my job a lot easier being able to. Give him a ball, whether it's through a check down or just handing it off, and then watching him go. I mean, that's that's a blessing. And, and I know you said you don't, you know, the national stuff you don't pay too much attention to, but you know, this is the second, you know, week now this season where you all will be playing one of these showcase games. Mm -hmm. uh, going back to the Orange Blossom Classic, is that um, what says someone who's been here at NCC longer? What has it been like to see the program rise to this location where it's not just you have these opportunities, but you are being, you know, demanded to fill these opportunities? Right. Yeah. You know, I think it's cool. I think it's cool. I mean, all these opportunities are such a blessing. You know, I think um, I think it's special for the MEAC and the SWAC. I think that, um, you know, we play in a lot of venues that not a lot of other SCS schools play in. Um, I think that um, it's special that our conferences get to uh, participate in something like this. Um, but, yeah, I think it's a great opportunity for, for our team uh, to go out there and uh, showcase our uh, brand of football.